the best mixes. The number one hit. DJ International Radio EU. Oh yeah, I have sprint, so Yeah. So um anyway, so you're spinning there, you got you got a great night happening. Uh maybe, you know, uh, I know that um uh some of the guys wanted me to come down there and film. Uh for DJ T V we may be down there, I'm not sure. Uh but a big huge weekend going on that weekend, you know, Labor or uh, uh, uh Thanksgiving. Big, big yeah, it's it's a great way to kick off your um holiday holiday season, so to speak. Uh, one thing that I like about the whole concept of the event is that it's uh, it's a unity thing. The music is what unites us all. So, um, and there's no, to me, outside of love music, you know, um, there's no better music on the face of the planet in terms of uniting people than house music. Right. So that's that's a great. That, I think it's going to be. Well, I know for sure it's going to be a great event, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a lot of love and people from all ages. You know, the younger generation that really wants to experience the music more authentically from DJs that played it when it first came out. We have a. Some, sometimes you have a different kind of feel and love because it brings back other old memories, and you'll have the older generation that was actually there in the beginning. And when I say older, I mean like myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. I, I'm not as young as I would like to be. Yeah, but you, you um, were a baby back then, so it's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know what, though? I, I, um, I, when I think back to it now, it does seem that way. But at that moment in my life, I thought I was so grown. I, at 18, I was so grown. Yeah. But now I know that was not the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 your career's gone uh, stellar. Aside from being, you know, a premier female DJ, which that's a triumph in itself. Um, but uh, uh, you know, your your stuff on the radio as a radio personality, um, I have to congratulate you. I'm really uh, thrilled with that for you. Oh, thank you. I um, actually, what happened was I started when I started uh, first DJing. It was 1980, and as I got older, actually after Used by DJ, I started interning at WGCI, um, and I saw, I was at, um, what was I? I was at DJ International one night, and when we left, I ran into Farley, and I said to him, you know, you really should add a female to your, the Master Mix team. That's when it was the Master Mix 6 on WGCI. And uh, and Farley said, okay, make 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 take make take, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. So I did, and that's what kind of ushered that. And the internship is what ushered me into to wanting to do um, radio, and from there, just it just took off from there. I've worked in Chicago as uh, markets as large as Chicago and um, and New York, and as small as Flint, Michigan. Um, so I've been, you know, around, I had, uh, an opportunity to one of the stations that I was programming won a stellar award, um, wow. for gospel music. And yeah. then, uh, I won a billboard award for program and music director. So that's kind of, that's, that's, that's really a lot of fun. And, and, and what's great about that is, uh, not, not saying anything about anything else, but the fact that you're two house artist, you're a two house person, you understand house music, understand mixing. Um, you know, it, it, it's not easy to say that by most people who are doing it today, especially radio people. You know, they like it, but they're not into it like like you are. Right. And I think that's what's great about what you're doing. Yeah, I think one thing that I found um, just from working in other markets is that people nowadays, they like house music, but they don't call it house they, they attach another name to it for whatever reason, um, and when you, well, you uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a lot of racism going on there, and a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of uh, 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 marketing that people are trying to re- redirect everyone's attention to right. some kind of market. So I'll call it what it is. I got no hassles about calling a racist a racist or a, 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 a business person, uh, you know, trying to do their business because there's nothing wrong with that. But let's let's call it the way it is because these guys are trying to change history. They're trying to change our music and uh, and divert the world's attention from that. But we, you know, let me just say this: 
the what any DJ anyone can become a DJ today. They don't need to have the the right. the, the the skills because you don't right. have vinyl, and you have the do, computers that do everything for you, and right. and um, you can be a producer now. Anyone can be a producer because you don't have to produce. It's already done. It's already just a matter of 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 editing, not even editing so much as as just uh, cut and pasting. You know, and anyone yeah. who can run a, a a computer program can can become a quote unquote producer. So the point is, is that in itself is not bad, uh, and and I I I don't think anyone needs to be elite about that. You know, or I I'm a real producer, I'm I'm a real DJ. But what it does mean is that those people who are just new in it and who are not experienced in it are not going to have the real the real passion or soul behind it. So that's why absolutely that's why EDM is not not uh, you know um, a lot of people say there's no passion, there's no uh, soul to it. You know, and that's why it's yeah. all soul. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that's absolutely uh, correct, and I think that, um, and it's not that the technology, yes, will give you the tools that you need to to have the the ability to do something, but the ability to do it and the ability to do it well and the ability to uh, make, to be able to tell that story through the way you orchestrate the music together, when you're blending it together, the songs that you choose, the way that you emphasize certain parts of the song, it's very, it's something, you can't, you can't feel something that you've never experienced. You can kind of simulate it with what the technology does. It simulates what's real, but there's the, the warmth and the feel of the, of the music, it's not, it, you can't get that from the digital world that we have now, although you, you can come kind of close to it, but it's still nowhere as great. It's like what I call artificial intelligence, yeah. you know, in terms of a life form. It, it's an artificial, it's, it's an artificial, it's, it's musical masturbation. There it is. That's what it is. Right. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the real thing. Well, there you go. So is that, now, having said that, the kids today have no idea what you're talking about. They don't know, you know, what it's like to actually, you know, um, uh, mix vinyl and, and, and having to, to uh, grab that next record from the crate, dig it out, and get ready for it. It's, it's a whole different experience, though. But yeah, I, a lot of, I, I see a lot, of, a lot of DJs that say, if you, you know, you're not a real DJ if you never had to carry a crate of records. Yeah. Um, you know, if you never, they're DJs now that, that it's not, you know, it's like, I'm not, mad at anybody because some people um that were born you know in 1990 you don't you don't get mad at them because technology came at a time where it was uh easy for them to have access to it and we didn't have it you know so i can't be mad at them uh what i would say is for people who are coming up in the house music community today is to learn the history of what it is you say you love if you love something and you have absolutely no idea where it came from or what it's about in its form, then how much do you really and truly love it? You're a surface lover, which that's okay too, you know, but if you really want to experience, uh, have a full-fledged experience, you need to understand what it is you're involved in and what it is that makes you, why the music and the way the DJ plays the music makes you feel the way that you feel. Why sometimes, it's like when you go to church. And, you know, you have people, they go to church. They don't usually go to church, but they go to church, and all of a sudden they get swelled up with this feeling, and this burst of energy comes out of them, and they may begin to cry. They may begin to stand up and jump around, whatever it is. That's the that's the feeling of the music, how it moves through you and how it um, releases the tension and allows your body to flow in the natural order that it's supposed to. And you start to do stuff, and you move, and all of a sudden you have no rhythm. But when you get on that floor and that music starts and the DJ's playing that music the right way, all of a sudden you're the greatest dancer in the world. And that, that's, the, that's the great thing about, about house music and a great DJ. So, so I want to say that, uh, you know, we're doing a, a DJ National uh, Summer um, Festival this, in 2014. And uh, I would like to, uh, to appear as a DJ on one of the stages there. Now you know, Rocky. Anytime you ask, I'm always going to be there. Well, you and and I appreciate that. And and and, but you need to be there historically and from uh, just because of the the talent you have today. I heard your mix, 
last night or the other night on, on Saturday, and, and we played again last night. And I want to ask you about that. Well, great mix, by the way. Really, really Thank good you. songs and music. Uh, and you were you had like peppered through there. You had a bunch of uh, drops from uh, uh, celebrities, uh, and mm-hmm. and John Legend. How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had um, during the you know during my thirty years of doing radio, I've met so many different celebrities, and I always have them do a drop for me, a personal drop for me, um, endorsing listening to me on the radio. Well, the only difference is you're still listening to me on the radio, but this time I'm mixing as opposed to talking. So yeah, absolutely. That's I just, great, yeah. I, I just decided to marry the two together. No, there's absolutely every reason in the world to do that. And, you know, um, I just want to say your mix was really that strong. And the reason why I, I you know, I, I am really fired up on what you did is, you know, there's a few female, female DJs that I know personally who are really, really qualified DJs. You're one of them. And uh, there's another girl um, who's, um, check this out, she's a chick spinning in a gay club. Now, you know she's got to huh? be good. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. And, and uh, she spins in a club called The Hydrate. And uh, I don't know if you know her. Um, Laura B., do you know her? Laura B.? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think well, so. the point is, she's well, a female, and and I was oh, talking with her about the challenges wait. of being a girl as a DJ, and and yeah, I, I, I know there's a ton of them, and I know. Wait, I you, think I do. I think I do. Are you talking about Lori Branch? Uh, I don't know. Her, I don't think that's her last name. I, I I don't know her last name. All I do do is know her as Laura B. And she okay. she but, spins at the high rate right. in a bunch of the gay clubs, and you don't have a a, a female DJ at a male gay club. Unless you're really good, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 I think I know females have always gotten uh, uh you know the uh, left out of the game, especially in the early part of it. And um, you know, I'm not saying I you know I was guilty of that, but I know that at the warehouse, you know, we didn't really look at female. I didn't look at female DJs uh, the way I would look at them today because I think it was a, a little bit different. You know, when you had someone like Mike Dunn, it, no matter who you are, it's gonna be hard to spin up against, in my opinion, at that time. But uh, but um, uh, how do you feel about what it was like to be a DJ as opposed to now? Is there a difference? You know what? Um, it's it's funny because uh, Farley and I had this conversation in regards to when I was 15. I walked up to him. He was uh, standing in front of um, uh, the old mansion, too, an old south side um, spot that we used to go to. And I walked up to him, and I didn't know him from Adam. And I walked right up to him and said, you're not all that. I'm a better DJ than you are. I could mm. I could beat you in a battle right now. And Farley looked at me you were and he was hey, I was fifteen. He was in shock. Oh, he can tell you the story now. He he was in total shock. Yes. This girl walked up to him and just had the nerve to say that to him. Oh, I had big balls. So I never thought that I never thought that um that whole girl boy thing, I was like, anything, you know what? Just like I can't stand up and use the bathroom, you can't give birth to a baby. So now, there we go. Yep. So beyond that, yep. let's keep it moving. So I never really, um, I always, I never had a fear of getting in there with the guys and and throwing my elbows too. I never wanted to be on the same. Uh, I didn't consider myself one of the guys. I I was clear on the fact that I was a female and. That's what made me special, but also what made them special is that they were guys. So they had their own stage. I had my own stage, but we could stand on stage together. I, I want to be equal. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be up here, down here. I want us to be equal because when we're, when we're equal, we're stronger. And so that was always my thought. Right. And then um, we uh, Park Avenue Promotions put together Fantastic Four, uh, which was myself, Celeste Alexander, Kenya Lenore, and a young lady named Bird. And Kenya Lenore is Ricky Lenore's little sister, and um, Bird is Hugo H.'s um, little cousin. And uh, But they were from the West Side, and myself and Celeste, we were South Side DJs, but they put us all together, and we packed out uh, sours, you guys the were candy, the noise. candy store. Yeah. We were the original Super Jane. Mm-hmm. So what they did in 1995, they took what we did and branded themselves, which in 1983, 84, we didn't know anything about branding right. so and marketing. That was a whole different thing. But 
clearly we didn't have to have a guy open. We didn't play. We didn't open four guys. We played our own parties, and we packed those parties out. Now, whether or not people were coming because they wanted to see some boobs behind some tables, they they weren't disappointed. They danced, and we didn't show our boobs because that wasn't what you would do. It wasn't a strip club. You weren't there for the fancy dancing DJ. That was not what well, we were about. You know, a lot of girls do that. We today. were there to pay. A lot of, yeah, see? Yeah. I, I can't, you know, it's just like I, um, it's, we had, we understood that if you wanted to be respected in a business, then you needed to come at it from a business perspective. And so that, even at that young age, we, we knew that. And so I think that kind of got us a little, a little bit of a different um, uh, respect and that people and that a prom- promotion uh, group decided we're going to put all our money and all our effort behind these four females. And they did that, and I thank them for it. Nobody else has done that. Nobody else has thought about that or thought about the value of, of a woman mixed team in years. Nobody out of Chicago, period. Not a promoter has thought about that, period. Yep. You know, on that level. Um, well, promoters, totally promoters aren't, yeah, promoters aren't, aren't people who are committed to anything other than, than the dollar, basically. So they're not looking at, at the, 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 the whole picture. They're not going to get the fact that there's the unique dynamics of, of, a, of a, a group of female DJs uh, who are just as good as guys. I mean, it's a, it's a great thing. That, but that's why we have that show, by the way, uh, 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 Divas Buying the Decks. You know, and mm-hmm. it, it does highlight the women, uh, you know, it mixes as well. So that's what we're doing there. Yeah, I love DJ Val. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I, I, um, I have to thank you as well for the opportunity with, um, with you by DJ, and um, Big, you know, I love that. It. Right, it's still one of my favorite records. You know. Um, oh, um, thank you. And actually, where did you get the name the First Lady? Huh? Where did you get the name First Lady, by the way? Um, when I chose the name First Lady when I first started in radio because I thought, you know, you had you had Queen Latifah and you had, uh, you know, Princess Ivory. You had all these other people, and then you had, you know, um, girls with not so nice names as right. time went on. And I decided that I wanted to have a name that commanded respect that when you said it you had to say it and know that you had to respect you had to respect well you, so you I, are first lady you know uh, i know so, that uh, uh kim Mazel has come uh recently and and uh you know put out the fact that she was the first lady in terms of the signing to a major label which she was you know from the house scene mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. there is a certain amount of uh, great respect that you have when you when you say that and and but you no, know, I because I've heard your name as first maybe before that you know you're the first name that comes to mind when I think of first lady. You're not taking anything away from Kim because yeah. she, what a master she is, you know. But uh, but uh, um, that's part of the whole thing about I think people underestimate uh, what the the abilities and the uh, from a creative and technical standpoint, and uh, you've mastered that. So I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing you. I don't know if I'm going to get down there to see you. Uh, but um, we may be out front uh, with the camera doing some interviews. So will you come out and say hi to us if we get over there? Absolutely. 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 And then and then uh, uh, bring uh, bring uh, uh, your favorite person along too if if uh, if he's got time. He, yes, he will. He will have. He he definitely um, has time. He's doing his thing with uh, Foxhole with uh, Jamie Foxx. So, but he but we make time for Rocky. Wow, I love it. I love it. That's, but, but, that's, that's the end of the story on that. You know, and, and, uh, and you know, Hugo is, is, what a great success that is. I mean, you know, Jamie Foxx, you don't get to work with uh, someone bigger than that, that's for sure. Um, uh, and I remember him uh, as one of the main DJs always at the club, at the warehouse. Yep. And, uh, and uh, I mean, you had nothing but great DJs there. That's why we did what we did, I think. And, uh and you don't get the, you you can't get, I mean, you know how many great DJs can they have working in one night? I mean, there's always more than than, than we're able to work there. But he was the guy there with us every time. He was always there, you know. So so that was saying, 
you know, that's saying a lot because there's a ton of great DJs that didn't really get to work there. He was there, you know. And, you know, what's funny is that, um, you know, uh, Hugo and I have been together 20 years. And uh, this second time around, we dated when we were 18 and 19. Uh, Tyree Cooper introduced us. And we, we dated, we broke up. And then a friend of my best friend, Tina, she brought me down to the warehouse because right. she knew Hugo was DJing there. Right. And she said, oh, just come on, we're going to go out. And so I, we came down, and she told us that Hugo DJ's here. And I was like, really? So we went up in the DJ booth, and DJ Emanuel was there. And he told if Hugo hadn't gotten there yet. And he, I said, well, just tell him that, that I was here. And so uh, from that night on, we saw each other again at the warehouse. Mm-hmm. That was 20 years ago, August 4th, 20 years ago. And we're still together. So yeah, there's a lot of history. That, that, that's so cool. The warehouse did it did create a lot of relationships, you know. Yeah. Not that it created well, yours, but it helped it. It was definitely helped, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, it was definitely a place that even when we drive down uh, down past uh, Halstead and Randolph now, we're going, man, I wish that wasn't a bicycle shop. <laughs> man, I wish that was so open. <laughs> yeah. Same thing, man. Hey, listen, I'm going to be opening up another club. I, that's one of, my, one of my missions here. And, and not uh, because I want a club, but uh, but there needs to be a place for house music uh, uh, from from the standpoint that I see it. And, uh, and we're definitely going to do it. And, uh, and you know, uh, obviously you're going to be there, you know, when we do that. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So um, other than that, uh, I will see you on the 28th for sure. Uh, yeah. I'm going to cut this interview up and put it on um, – uh, this week, I'll call you and let you know when it's going to be out. We're going to do this, and then I'll rebroadcast your mix right behind this. How's that? Okay. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, what I'm going to do is, uh, and I'm also working on a on a new, a new mix. So as soon as I get finished with that one, I'll send you that one too. Well, will, will you send it to us, and 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 um, your mix is always up. You all, first of all, you are officially always uh, on DJ National uh, Radio, and and it, and oh, uh, you know it's not cool. about DJ National Records. It's about DJs. That's what DJs has always been about. So, so whenever you want, however you want, it's uh, my casa, su casa. Oh, thank you, Rocky. I yep. appreciate that. Yep, yep absolutely. And uh, I know that uh, you got some great things coming up. So, so the thing we need to remind everyone is on the 28th at the House of Blues, you're going to be performing with with a lot. Well, actually, all those guys are lucky to perform with you. That's what I'm saying. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. No, that's you made thing. my night. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you got you got newcomers like uh, like uh, Tony Humphreys and and uh, Timmy Richford and Steve Hurley. You know, they, they, you got to give those little guys a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Real talk, real talk. All right, sir. Uh, truly love talking to you, and uh, uh, I'm glad you took the time out to uh, to talk to us, okay? Thank you, and I appreciate you calling me, Rocky. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and tell Hugo, uh, send him my love, all right? And, and I'll chat with, all you, right. with you, okay? Okay. All right, dear. Thanks. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.